Hello and welcome back or welcome if you're new. If you're new here, my name is Elena and I am the homeschooling mama to three kiddos. Here on the channel, we talk about everything from homeschooling to homemaking, a little faith and fitness and anything else really that's going on in our lives. So today I wanted to um, kind of give you an update before I dove into the rest of the video or maybe, I don't know, um, depending on how long I talk, <laughs> this may be the entire video, and a fitness update um, and how my weight loss journey has been going. So at the time of recording, I am about a month in to when I really started tracking meticulously. And I have taken a couple of days off in between as far as tracking my macros. Um, if you're not familiar with macros counting, I will put a link down below to a couple of sites that I feel like are really good place to get started on. One of those um, is the If It Fits Your Macros website, I, 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 F, if it fits. YM, your macros. <laughs> the other um, really great informational person that I absolutely adore, um, I just think he's hilarious, and I was part of his inner circle for a couple of months while our budget allowed, is um, Jordan Syatt. I will link his website down below too. He's full of information, and if your budget allows and you can get into his inner circle, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, the months that I was able to do it, it was really great. It was motivational and um, just full of so much information. So I actually didn't realize that it had already been a month um, since I had gotten a little bit serious, more serious about it. Um, if you have been familiar with our channel, you'll know that I have um, a couple of 90 day journeys that I've gone on before. And those were just kind of hit and miss more so than this time around. Um, those I really like, I came in strong and I would set out monthly goals, but I wasn't tracking um, as carefully as I was this time around. And I wasn't, um, I was just more so trying to get back to a healthier version of me. This time around, I set out with a specific number that I wanted to hit, and in a second, we'll talk about if I still have that same number that I wanna hit. So I've kind of had a long fitness journey. I apologize, I'm, this, I work out down in my basement, that's where I'm sitting, so it may not sound the best, um, but also it's a cloudy day, so the sun's coming out, in and out between the clouds, um, and it's affecting the light in here, but I wanted to, um, I was actually getting ready to work out, and I wanted to just sit down and film an update um, and just fill you in on all that's been going on. I will try to um, summarize really quickly what my fitness journey was. If you wanna hear more about um, where it all started for me and kind of more in detail, about my um, health and wellness journey like way way back when and then all the way up to now let me know and I will more than happy to sit down and film a video more on that but it has been a long long um, up and down road for me throughout many many years uh, I can remember back oh my gosh I can remember all the way back to the fourth grade is when I started my very first diet it was just kind of an up and down roller coaster ever since I I had some tumultuous times in my teens. I had, um, you know, just that body image and, and struggling with that. And I look back now at some of these pictures and I'm like, I can't believe that I thought that I was overweight here because <laughs> I wasn't, or I didn't look it anyways. Um, and then there were other pictures where I look back and I'm like, wow, this, this girl's clearly, um, I remember her and I remember feeling so lost and alone and um, just in a lot of pain. And then I had some times all in between there too, including when I first kind of fell in love with weightlifting and found that this was something that I actually enjoyed. So flash, flashing all the way forward here, um, this last little bit of journey, I wanted to really make sure that I was giving it my all. So I um, hinted that in the 90 day journeys, I kind of was setting goals and just kind of going with the flow a little bit more. Sometimes I would be more strict and sometimes I wouldn't. And this time around, I really wanted to be sure that I was giving it my all and doing what I could do. Here's what was happening with that though. I was so set on a number on a scale. I know that the scale is not the be all end all of your measurements. So I was also taking measurements and I've also been taking um, pictures so that I can kind of see my body as it's changing. I think what is happening is that my body is doing body recomposition. And what that means is that I am both losing fat and gaining muscle at the same time. So the scale, the number on the scale is not really budging all that much. I'm actually fluctuating between three pounds. I go from right now, I go from about 140 to 143 and I just can't seem to get any lower than 140. But my clothes fit so much better. Some of my jeans are a little too loose. Um, they, I can wear them, but I'm doing that constant where you're pulling them up throughout the day. Um, 
and I know that my face and my body are changing because the people closest to me um, can see it. Now, the people closest to me being my immediate family. So my husband can see it in my face when he's talking with me um, or sometimes I will be pulling up my hair and he's like, I can see the muscle in your arm and you can see the definition changing. And I'm extremely grateful to have such a supportive husband because sometimes I know when we go on these journeys, the people that we think will be the most supportive are not. And that is really difficult. We think that um, our closest friends and our family will be the ones that are cheering on the loudest for us. And that's not always the case. Um, sometimes they don't know how to cheer us on. Sometimes they um, just don't understand how important it is to us. I think sometimes even it can come from a place um, that maybe they're struggling with in their own lives. And it really actually has nothing to do with us. So. I will say that even though it, that part of it is difficult, that part of the journey to stay the course, um, you will find your people. And I say this, um, not just to you, but to me as well, I will find my people. I will find my tribe. I will, um, I know that whatever God has for me, he has, um, that support group for me as well. Um, and so I try to rest in that, especially on the hard days when I am looking for support, when I am looking for someone to motivate me, when I am looking for that extra little push of confidence or extra little push of, um, you've got this of, of someone believing in you. Um, on those days when, um, when I feel like I don't have anyone besides my dear husband um, to be cheering me on and I could just use an extra little boost, I will often turn to um, other people that are on social media. And so there are a few um, YouTubers that really inspire me and keep me motivated. And I enjoy their honesty and their realness in their videos. Um, lately, I I have been watching Julia Renee. She is much younger than I am and she is an IFBB pro. Um, so nowhere near where I am. I'm a homeschooling mama to three kiddos. So I have never entered a competition in my life, but she, um, there's something just motivating about her and something um, about her honesty and what's happening in her life that really speaks to me and I really enjoy it. So I've been watching her. I've also been watching In With Jen, who is another mama who is on her, her health and wellness journey. She's been on it for quite a while. She is, I believe she is also a trainer for her gym. There's some, some stuff that's changing there as well, but she's also another great one. But if I, if I can think of any more, I will link their channels down below too, because I know that it's nice to have those, um, people to kind of look to and turn to. A lot of times I will get on the treadmill for my warm up and I will watch their channels and just kind of get myself in the right mindset to work out. And it almost feels like a little built in group of girlfriends, if you will. If you have any recommendations for me, I would love, love, love to know more people um, to follow, especially if they're making videos here on YouTube as well. If you would leave them down in the comments for me, I would so appreciate that. Back to the update. So, um, in the beginning, all I really wanted was to get out of this kind of 140 block that I was in. And I just was struggling so hard that he couldn't do it. And I think mentally what I was doing was I kept lowering my calories. So what I do is I cycle through, um, I have four low days and then I have three high days and I kind of was trying to cycle through throughout the week with that. In, um, in one of my original 90 day journeys, I was doing what they would call like a weekend warrior where my four low days would be Monday through Thursday. And then my three high days would be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But I, what I found was that I was not just having high days. I was having binge days. So I would get to the weekend and I would be like, well, it's a high, higher macro day or a higher calorie day. So I can kind of just eat whatever I want. And that's how the weekend would go. And I was basically undoing whatever work I had done the prior days in the week. And so I didn't want to do that this time. Time around so I really wanted to cycle it through so I thought maybe having you know like two low days and then one high day and kind of going back and forth um, instead of cramming all my high days together would work a little better um, both mentally and physically for me but because I could not get that number to change on the scale I think that I inadvertently um, just kept sticking to low days and a lot of my low days in the beginning were too low I was not even hitting um, the lowest macro 
count that I should and I was not getting the um, lowest calorie amount that I should. And what could happen if you do that? I don't know for certain that this is how my body reacted, but it kind of seemed that it did. Um, is that my body was reacting and saying, well, we're not getting enough calories in, um, so we're not going to we're not going to burn as many calories. And my body started to adapt to the very low numbers. The danger in that one is that um, it's just too low of a number. It was too low of a number for me. Um, you run the risk of being very lethargic because you're just not getting enough energy and enough fuel in in the form of food and then um also i know for myself i run the risk of binging because then i get to a point where i'm just breaking and i can't take it anymore and i want to eat whatever i want to eat and then it's too much um and it's oftentimes not too much is a good stuff it's too much of the um sweets and the junk food and the fast food and um it just it's just too much and then my body reacts poorly to those food choices and it just starts this really bad cycle for myself so i knew this and i had to take a look um a really hard look at what was happening and um what potential damage i could do to my metabolism and to my mindset um through this i also try to be very aware that my children are watching me um, I do have one daughter and it is very important to me that she sees a healthy um, kind of view of eating right and this so-called diet culture or whatnot. Um, I actually never really say I'm mommy's on a diet or anything like that. I'm very honest with my kids telling them why I'm counting my macros, what's going on. Um, on my bad days, I'm like, look, it's a bad day. We have them and we're moving forward. And um, I try to be as honest and transparent as I can that is age appropriate for my children. And I try really hard not to um, talk poorly about my body in front of my children, especially. I try not to talk poorly about my body, period, but it is really hard sometimes to say kind things about yourself. It's something that I'm working on, but I am a work in progress. So I was noticing that I was not, probably not getting enough calories in, and I did not want my body to get adjusted to that low of a calorie because I did not want that to be my maintenance calories. I didn't want, you know, 12 to 1300. I am, I'm a, I am a little bit on the shorter side. Um, I'm five, two and a half. And so when you are shorter, it, it, it does affect how your body carries weight a lot of times. Um, when you are taller, you have more room, I guess, <laughs> to carry your weight. And when you're shorter, it's a little bit compact and, and, and five pounds may look a little bit differently on you. Five pounds of fat versus five pounds of fat on somebody who is you know, taller. So, so I started doing a little YouTube researching and I um, also found another really great YouTuber. I believe her channel's name is Fit and Nerdy, I think. I will link it down below also with the other great women that I have found on here. But um, I started watching her and a few other ones and just kind of really learning more about um, the dangers of having your calories a little too low. And I realized that what I was doing was probably having way too many low calorie days and not just what was in my low setting, my low calorie, low macros days. It was even lower than that because on some level I was thinking because this number is not changing, I just need to keep eating less. And in my mind, even saying it out loud, I'm so sad for that woman because I'm like, that's not the truth. <laughs> You don't need to eat less. Um, I knew it, but sometimes it is really hard to therapy yourself. And sometimes it is really hard to um, see that when it, you're in the middle of the storm, right? So I needed to take a step back and um, really be honest with myself and, um, and what my goals were and what I wanted to do to attain them. So again, I sat down with my husband because he is my sounding board, my very best friend, um, my coach. And he, I was like, I think this is what I'm doing to myself. I have mentioned before that my husband is really great at um, the workouts and knowing exercises and knowing what muscle group is working, how to kind of place those all together. Um, and I am a lot better at um, figuring out nutrition and I like counting macros and I like the numbers side of that. And so, um, but I do, like to talk to him about what's going on and what I'm doing. Just one to have a sounding board, some one somebody I can talk to and they can talk back to me and say, yeah, that totally makes sense or I, I'm not following, um, explain this to me further. And so I sat down and I was like, look, I think that I am not eating enough, which sounds kind of funny because I was like, the scale 
shows that I've got plenty on me. <laughs> but um, like I said, my body was was changing. Um, so I was getting more muscle um, and losing fat, but then I was just kind of plateauing and not getting any any further. So what I decided to do, or what I'm deciding to do going forward, um, and this past week we've kind of gone that route, is to not give up. <laughs> but I'm also going to be sure that I am hitting hitting the numbers for my low days. So I want to make sure that I'm not going any lower than my lowest one. I also realizing that I'm finishing out a full month, I'm going to bump up my numbers a little bit more. And it can sound counterproductive if you are like, well, I thought you were trying to lose weight. Why would you give yourself more food? It's kind of what I'm doing is trying to get my body not used to not accustomed to one certain number. So for example, if my maintenance amount, um, maintenance being this is what the amount of calories that I would need to maintain my current weight, that would be your maintenance amount. If my maintenance amount was say 1600 calories and I wanted to lose weight and I dropped my calories all the way down to 1300, if I stayed at that number or even lower than that, for a very long period of time, given like maybe, I don't know, six to eight weeks, maybe at the least, it could go on further than that. Sometimes you just keep going because like I said, you have off days or you have <coughs> struggles or it's not, um, your body is recompositioning, compositioning, your, your body is changing, you're gaining muscle, but the number on the scale may not be changing for whatever reason it is. If you end up staying at too low a number for too long, what happens with your body is your body becomes um, able to adjust itself to that calorie amount. So now my new maintenance is, um, my body has essentially changed my new maintenance amount to 1300 calories. I do not want to be at maintenance at 1300 calories because if I ever wanted to cut again, I'd have to go even lower than that. And that is not a lifestyle that I really want to have. And so um, I'm going, I really want to make sure that I'm cycling in a healthy and productive way for me and my lifestyle. I hope that this really makes sense. Um, like I said, if it doesn't, um, one of the videos I will link below talks better on this than I can, and I will link that for you as well. But essentially, I'm going to up my calories a little bit more in the upcoming weeks. I'm going to continue to keep training, and I think that what I will do right now, I do a mix of um, not very much cardio, to be quite honest, and weightlifting. Um, but my weightlifting numbers are not very high, so I think that I'm going to start setting some goals in my weightlifting and um, try to up my numbers there um, so that I'm not so laser focused on the calorie count or I'm not so laser focused on the scale moving. I also, um, I'm going to celebrate maybe some of these wins that I'm not celebrating as much, like when I can see the changes um, in, in, in pictures of myself or like when I can see, um, even when I'm editing videos, I can see sometimes I'm like, oh, your, your, your face is a little bit thinner. It may not be noticeable to other people. Um, like I said, especially, the people that you think are going to be cheering you on, it may not be noticeable to them or it may be noticeable to them and they just don't want to say anything. But this journey is for you and not them. And so I really want to make sure that I am celebrating those wins and when I see the measurements change because those are also changing as well for me. So that's a great thing. I will also link uh, an app that I've been using. I know I've talked about it before on this channel. I've been using the Rise app and it is a great motivating um, place on social media. And I know that can be hard to come by sometimes. So going forward to kind of summarize this very chatty long <laughs> video um, is I'm going to change my calorie and my macro count ever so slightly. It's not going to be a ton. I'm just going to change it a little bit. I'm going to start setting some goals in my weightlifting um, to kind of see along where I'm at. I will have a um, summary in my journal that I keep of um, what's gone <laughs> what's gone on and how that's changing. So, so if it's completed by the time this video is up, I will link it for you up in the cards. If not, here's your notice to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss that. I usually talk about, I usually do a monthly wrap up um, in my um, planner or journal or whatever you want to call it. This time around, I am getting my hair caught in it, but also I am just using a plain old composition notebook and I'm, I'm actually really loving this. 
So I will link more of um, the changes that are happening and goals that I'm setting in here um, in this video. This is typically where you'll see um, when my measurements are changing and because um, I do I do briefly touch on that too and then I also put in my pictures and things like that. So um, yeah, my kiddos are coming down and I'm running out of the space that I have for workout time. So I need to get to that. But I wanna say thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for coming alongside me and this journey. Um, really, honestly, truly, it means so very much to me. And I know that I probably say this a lot in my videos, but that's because it is so true. Having you along um, for the journey and take out your time in the day to hang out with me and watch the videos that we're producing just means so very much to us. If you're a part of this YouTube family, thank you, thank you so very much for being a part of our little YouTube family. I know we're not a large channel, um, but we are heartfelt. And so <laughs> I really appreciate that. If you are not a part of our YouTube family, what are you waiting for? There's all kinds of inspiration amongst our chaos happening here, and we hope that you'll join us. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't heard today, you are so deeply and truly loved and so, so appreciated. Thanks for watching.